except for a couple of families, so <laughs> thank you. Um, look, after tonight, this will be the last time we see you all together again before graduation, so time does move quite quickly for your boys. And it was only this time last year I was sitting through the equivalent of this talk, but at St Monica's, because my daughter was graduating St Monica's, and you'll hear a lot of informa uh, useful information tonight. The focus of tonight is to pass on to you relevant information that is required for your sons next year. Uh, this night is being recorded, so if you miss something tonight or want to refer back to it at a later, a later time, you will have that recording um, sent to you. So I don't do a lot of talking tonight. I'll hand over to Lance Helms and Helen Likes shortly, but I will start by leading us in prayer. So in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, you talked about the need for us to have our priorities right and not to hoard possessions. You said that where our treasure is, there our heart and commitment will really be. Touch our hearts that we may love people and use things and never the other way around. Inspire us to seek your first kingdom and use our talents and gifts for the benefit of others. Lord, inspire me to get my priorities right and make my choices wisely. St. Marcin Champagne, Mary our good mother, let us always remember, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you very much for coming. I'll pass firstly to uh, Lance Helms, who will speak to you, and then to Helen Light. Over to you, Lance. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you're coming in, uh, there are plenty of seats on this side. So uh, I know we have a lot of people to my right here. Forgive me if I only give you half of my attention for the filming part. They don't see you. Okay, so I'm not ignoring you, but uh, it is just part of how the dynamics are looking today. So, but welcome. All right, one of the things that we are going to be talking about today is QTAC. And you may not know what the function is of QTAC, and that's okay, you don't need to know everything about them. But the main two things that we're going to concentrate on today is that this is the organization that is responsible for calculating the ATAR, and this is the institution that you are going to use, usually, in order to apply for going to a university or another tertiary institution in Queensland, okay? So the Queensland Tertiary Admin uh, Admissions Center is what QTAC stands for. All right, so here are a bunch of universities that are involved. QTAC is owned by seven, but actually facilitates enrollments for all of these other universities. But it is not the only way that those universities uh, actually enroll students. It is just one way of accessing many universities through one platform. So please keep that in mind as we go through this presentation that this is a one-stop shop that can make it easy for applying to multiple universities. Now, do not feel like you need to take notes. We are actually going to share this PowerPoint presentation with you. So we will have the recording as well as this PowerPoint. So we are using quite a few of the QTAC slides. If they look a little outdated or you don't like the colors, uh, I do have to apologize on behalf of QTAC, but please just do your best to uh, focus on uh, what the slides are saying. Now, should your sons be wishing to apply to universities elsewhere, it is the same sort of process uh, with different institutions in different states. UAC, for example, in New South Wales or in uh, Canberra, they become the institution that funnels a lot of different applications as well. So if your sons are thinking they might want to go to Victoria, I don't know why, but they want to go somewhere else, that's okay. There are ways, but the same process is, is pretty similar. So today, we will just be looking at the Queensland system. All right, so when we're looking at admissions criteria, we look really at two things that we're, we're concentrating on, and that's eligibility and merit. So eligible, are you eligible to get into that course? So every institution that QTAC is dealing with has their own um, priorities, what they think is important, okay? So if you're needing to pass English, that may be one of the things that make you eligible. Are you old enough to go through QTAC and do this? So if you are not meeting eligibility requirements, then QTAC is not going to be soliciting an offer on your behalf. So we just need to make sure, first of all, that we are being eligible. 
So this little flow chart that you can see here, you might want to refer to later, but what we're trying to do is help students ensure that they understand they are eligible in order to go through a course. As COVID has made a lot of changes to tertiary education, sometimes there aren't nearly as many prerequisites as there used to be. English is generally one of those prerequisites. So in order to be eligible to go into medicine, for example, and you want to go to a university in Brisbane, it may say you must pass English or an English equivalent like literature. So as long as you made a C in it, that may be the only eligibility requirement that you need to, that you need to um, ensure that you have. But the next part is where it gets harder. And that is with merit. So merit is how well you have done, not just on what makes you eligible, but what was your course of study? So as you can see there, there are a few things that actually give merit to students when they are going through the application process. There's no one, uh, I guess, pathway that students can go through that fits all institutions. They can all be a little different, but just know that all of those listed there are valuable ways in demonstrating the merit that the individual university or tertiary institution needs. All right, so what QTAC basically does is handles offers from universities and provides a platform for applicants to get into universities. And one of the ways that they do that is by doing the ATAR. So what happens with year 12 students, as long as they are ATAR eligible, and they should all know if they are ATAR eligible at the moment, if they are ATAR eligible, they can apply and then wait until they get their results and then figure out what this ranking is going to be. So it's a waiting game. How do you apply for a course of study without knowing what your final rank is going to be? Now, Ms. Light is going to take you through that process so you can hedge your bets. Always good to have a plan, and that's what this evening is supposed to get you to think about. How do we plan for how we are going to be applying? Because there's still a lot of unknowns that are out there. All right, so the ATAR rank. There's some information there. See, there, there are 2,000 bands that they are placing students in, and it can be very, very competitive. So depending on the course of study a student wants to go in, depending on the city, can make a very big difference for what sort of ATAR that student has to have. So knowledge is important. Students have been given a QTAC booklet, and in the booklet it has uh, divisions on the type of study, and then within those types of study, like humanities for example, different universities and the different degrees that they are offering. Many of those degrees have what they would expect a student to need as an ATAR in order to satisfy merit. So it gives them a little bit of an indication. Later this month, I'll let year 12 students know that I have enough information to give them an ATAR prediction. Okay? So that can actually assist students in knowing are they shooting too high or is there some other pathway that they might need to investigate. Please keep in mind QCAA, if you know the old OP system, QCAA, which um, deals with certification, meaning that the high school uh, certificate of education, you have passed high school. This is very different than an ATAR. Two different institutions. So when we're talking about that final rank to get into university, the QCAA has nothing to do with it. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through the process what happens? We're not going to worry about Harry. First thing for an ATAR is students must pass English. Whichever English course they have decided to do, and the three that we have on an offer are Essential English, English, and Literature for our current year 12s, all three of those will satisfy this as long as the students pass that course. It doesn't have to be used in the calculation of the ATAR, but they must pass it. If the student fails, in units three and four, in either of those three, they will not get an ATAR, all right? Does not mean they still can't get into a university, they just won't get an ATAR. 
students who uh, or take a vet course, and they may not appear to be um, ATAR eligible. Well, they actually get a rank if they have actually completed their course. So even though a CERT three in fitness that we offer may be that fifth subject for a calculated rank, students can also get a different type of rank based on the certificate of course that they've actually passed. So there's more than just the ATAR for the ranking system to be aware of that helps students actually field offers from tertiary um, institutions, okay? So, oh, I'll pass that one now. All right, so sometimes parents are a little nervous, students are a little nervous when they hear this concept about scaling, all right? Once QCA has passed over all the information about um, students' grades from the current year 12s all across the state, QTAC goes to work at saying, okay, we have results, we know what their percentages are out of 100 for general subjects, we know if they've made an A or a B or a C in a general subject, so, or sorry, an applied subject, so how do we balance that to actually rank every student in year 12 at once? There is an agenda, and I think we would know this from the government, they are pushing mass and science. Mass and science is very important to our government. So when scaling occurs, those subjects generally scale better than humanities or arts subjects. That's just how it is. But students need to do well in whatever subjects that they're doing, and that's all that's in their control. So, the purpose, and I'll use two, exa two examples. One student is doing mathematical methods, and he has a 90, okay? He graduates, and he has a 90%. The scaling is important because that 90 in mathematical methods is not the same as a 90 in general mathematics. The concepts that the student in mathematical methods has had to undertake, had to demonstrate his skills, much more difficult. So the concept of scaling is embedded in this system, and it will not go away. So we have to live with that. But some subjects that we offer, even if they're applied subjects, do scale well, like religion and ethics. Last year, an A in religion and ethics scaled better than a 90 in general mathematics. Their algorithms for how they scale. I'm happy for you to investigate those. They provide them. There are booklets and booklets, one every year for how they do it. On the whole, it really doesn't matter. It comes out in the wash at the end that if the students have done the best they possibly can in the subjects that they've taken, they've gotten in the best ATAR they can possibly get. And hopefully that's enough to get into the course of study they want to do at a university. But that number, that ATAR is out of their control. When students come to talk to me about it, I say, don't worry about it. Just focus on your assessments. And parents, that's why I encourage you to, to help your sons with. It's just do your best to study for what may be on that exam. You're not in control of knowing everything that is going to be on those exams. Everyone's in the same boat, okay? So focus on what we do have control over, and that is how well we can prepare ourselves for all of our assessments. ATAR calculations or calculators, um, QTAC is saying that it's a not very good idea. They're actually pretty close. So even though they may not be identical because the scaling changes a little every year, it can be a very good ballpark if students want to use those, okay? So here gives you the way about how the calculation of the ATAR is done. First, the students have taken their exams. QCAA figures out what the results are. If they have five general subjects or four general subjects and a, and a general or a certificate, they turn all that information over to QTAC. So QTAC then takes that information, all right? They look at VET qualifications, they look at what those scores are, and then they start their scaling process. That takes a while. Once they have done the scaling process, they are going to take the best five subjects for each student and they give them a point value. The student gets a point value, all right? Then once they have that, 
they rank every student in the state. Okay? So where that student falls from 1 to 17,000, where is he? And then they decide that they are going to create the bands. So in the top 0.05%, there might be 75 students. And then the next 0.05%, there might be 75 students. The closer we get to 50, the fewer students there are in a band. There may only be 40. The closer we get to 30, we have fewer students. So it is very heavy with the number of students in the upper bands rather than the lower bands. So it is not just take the whole cohort, divide by 2,000, and you have the same number in every band, okay? So just be aware of that, okay? But our students are not aware of how well other students are prepared. No one knows that is out of our control. So keep that in mind when focusing on this number. It's out of your control. You don't know what everybody else is doing. You don't know who you're competing against. But essentially, this is a system. When you are ranked against every other student in the state, it's a competition in that way. All right? So what are you in control of, gentlemen? Your assessments. That's it. Being ready for them. All right. So I'm pretty much done. We I want you to know as parents, sorry, did I go? No. I want you to know as parents, we have asked all the students to set up their ATAR accounts as well as their QCAA account, my, my QCE. Hopefully that is done. It is very important. If they have not done that, they need to. And in order to ensure that that is done properly, they need to ensure that they are using the same information in QTAC as what they have in the QCA portal for their MyQCE account. So the USI needs to be the same. The spelling of their names need to be the same. The uh, birth date all need to be the same. OK, very, very important. Last thing, though, is about their email address. They cannot use their school email address. So if you're a little weary about them setting up their own email account, you're going to have to let them grow up eventually, and it needs to start really soon, because once they leave here, they won't have access to their email account anymore. So do not use that as, as part of the um, information that you're giving. Now, the one thing that we do ask students to do, if they're willing to, is to uh, allow us to see what their ATAR result is. So there is an opt in or out tick box. And uh, if you do allow us to see your ATAR, that, that's great. We keep it very, very confidential. But we need that information if you're one of those students who scores over a 90 and we invite back for our um, academic assembly next year. If we don't know what we have and you say, oh, by the way, I got a 98.5, well, you're going to have to prove it to us, all right? But we, we have a big process about inviting students back. We love having them back, but uh, we need to have that information. So just be aware that when it comes to that box, are you actually ticking or unticking correctly if you're wanting to share it, okay? Uh, next thing right here about ATAR. If you have specific questions about the process and more in depth, please contact QTAC. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why you would really want to, but <laughs> they're going to have those answers possibly or the avoidance techniques to you know, go around answering that question. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what you would get from it. I know when I've called, I haven't really gotten the answers that I've wanted, but they have a process. They are there and they say, please contact us if you do have questions. We will field questions at the end of this presentation in a very realistic approach to you if, um, if you have worries or concerns about something. If it is extremely personal-centered, what, what you're asking about, uh, please wait until after we've closed the session, and then we'll stay back and then have those uh, personal questions for you later. All right? This process is not difficult. The one thing to remember is ensuring that the data that you put in is accurate and that you are meeting deadlines, all right? So as far as the rest of the process, Ms. Light is going to take you through preferences and uh, prerequisites, I think. All right, thank you, everyone.
evening, gentlemen and ladies. Um, lovely to be here tonight with you. So what I'm just going to go through um, with you briefly is about preferences, how you select your preferences, universities that you might be interested, pathways that you might be interested in taking, such as apprenticeships and things like that, uh, TAFE courses that will be possibly free for you to participate in, and uh, opportunities for you to go through. So in, um, in starting off, applying a QTAC, we have got the QR code that you can scan and then, then go straight through it. Um, the next thing I want to uh, reiterate about is, is the USI. We went through this with the students and they applied for a USI. If a student was not here on the day, um, this was a few weeks ago, they will need to get a USI. Every student, regardless of whether they're going to be, go through the apprenticeship or trade industry or go to university, TAFE, go through a private RTO, they will need a USI. And the same thing starts again, they will need their private email address. So not using a school email, they will need to have their Louis number, they'll need a Medicare number or a driver's licence, anything like that to sign up. So briefly, we're going to just talk about meeting Harry. He's a current Year 12 student, he's on track to get an ATAR, and his favourite subjects are biology and physics. So he's, he's, he's had his sights set on going into n nursing and that's his dream job. So for Harry to remain on track, like Mr Helms has said, he needs five general subjects or the four general subjects and an applied subject or completed a certificate three or higher. So the only compulsory subject for ATAR is that Harry needs some a C for English, English literature, anything like that. So how can Harry find his course options? Really easy. In this find a course um, on the QTAC website, you just have to type in nursing. All done for you. You just press search and then voila, all these universities come up with anything with nursing. Then it's up to you then to click on each one of those individual universities and it gives you options then. It goes through Things like the overview of the course, the admission criteria, student profile and the career possibilities. So it's, it's quite an easy system and it's all there for you. So you can choose, you might for instance want to go to ACU, you might just want to go and stay here in Cairns and go to CQU. It depends on what you're doing. You could even go to TAFE and do nursing. So there are many, many options for you to do to choose from. So again, um, the grade is required to meet the prerequisite. So for example, English 3 and 4, you need a C, and Physics, Mathematic, math method, sorry, Units 3 and 4, again, we need a C to, to pass. Now, some preferences, some universities say to you, well, you need to have knowledge of a prerequisite. You may not have to have the prerequisite, but you may, may, may need to have some background knowledge. In this instance, if you haven't done physics and it says that you need prior knowledge of it, it might be of benefit for you to do a bridging course or to brush up on your physics. So it's not a certainty that you must have it, but you must have the knowledge background to be able to do that. So that's um, quite, quite specific with every individual university. They'll offer you the opportunity to say that you have prior knowledge to a different um, unit, even if you haven't done it at school. So preferences. So before you submit your QTAP application, you'll need to make a list of your top six favourite courses. This is known as your course preferencing. So what is preferencing? It's an important part of your application. So you have your desired courses, courses that you think you might want to, and then you have your backup, your pathway courses. And each application you need six courses. Don't think that you don't need them. You need to be able to go, okay, I want to go to this uni, I may need to go to that uni. If I can't get into that uni because they have said I need a higher ATAR, they need you know, 84% or 85% or 90% and you think, well, maybe I'm not going to quite get there, but I could get there with this 
another university. They give me the opportunity to get in there with 80%. 80, 80 so, so if you change your mind, again, that's okay. You can make changes for your list of preferences three times for free. The fourth time, you'll have to pay the exact same amount again to QTAC for your application, which is roughly around, I think it's $55 now. So you'll have to pay for that again. So you can change them three times, and then after that, you then need to pay again. So it's a good idea to keep one of your free changes for when, the eight, when, for when your ATAR is released, so then you can rearrange your preferences. Now, this slide, um, here at Saints, we've made this slide for you. So we've made the preference selection, we've given you the dates, so you can see there Thursday, um, the 7th of de December is the due date to submit documents for offer rounds. Then we've said, okay, um, QTAC opens in August, so you've got, okay, QTAC is open now, we can start sorting out through our preferences. And this is a really good way, because you can put your Louis number, your USI, your ATAR estimate, and the preferences that, where you want to go, your backup courses or your pathway opportunities. So we'll go back to Harry. Harry knows he really wants to do nursing, but it's a really good idea to have a backup plan. So Harry's been researching the backup cor courses and pathway options just in case he can't get straight into nursing. So when it comes time for him to make the course list, he should start by thinking about the order of the list. Okay, so Harry, he really wants to go to a um, Bachelor of Nursing at UQ. Then he thinks, well, I could do a Bachelor of Nursing at QUT as well. Then there's a Bachelor of Nursing at ACU. There's a Bachelor of Nursing at Griffith Uni, Bachelor of Health Science at Griffith Uni, and then a pathway, Diploma of Nursing through TAFE. We mightn't get into it. And some of these, um, Griffith University also has a campus or a, a college attached to the university. UQ now has a college attached to the university and they do VET courses that solely help students who haven't um, maybe achieve their highest ATAR at present, that will give them the opportunity to get into a pathway to go into university if that's how you want to go through. So again, ordering your preferences, your desired courses, the courses that you want to most study, your backup courses, courses you would be happy to study, and pathway courses. Now when we're talking about this nursing one back here, oh no, I mightn't be able to go back. When we're talking about the nursing courses, at TAFE, you can currently do that as a free course. So there's no fee charge whatsoever. So if you're even thinking about doing nursing, you can do a diploma of nursing through TAFE and you can start to enrol in it as soon as you finish school. Okay, so pathway courses, something like TAFE. Less competitive degrees, um, different campuses, like I talked about the colleges that are, are attached to the university itself. You can do regional institutions, bridging and tertiary preparation courses. They're the things that, that we said, okay, we've got assumed knowledge of physics, but maybe we need to go and do a bridging course in physics, or we need to do a bridging course in chemistry, but it's something that you might want to go into. So you need to think about combined diplomas and degrees. So if you start with a diploma, it'll automatically transfer you into your degree course. So you can start at something um, a little less, um, what would you say, a little less harder or a little we anxious about trying to get into a degree, you could start with your diploma and that'll just walk you straight into your, your university degree course. Um, you've also got guaranteed entry in there and you'll get credit transfer straight away from a diploma to a, to a bachelor degree. So university might not be it for everyone and that's what we've been just talking about. So if you're not looking at going to university, you might like to consider the following, which is TAFE or employment opportunities or trade qualifications. But like I said now, the universities have attached VET qualifications. They are now registered training organisations and they're helping the pathways for students to get into university if that's what they want to do. Or to just go there, be part of the university system, they're around their mates, all that sort of thing, and then they can just do their trade qualification and that's it. Just leave happy, 
and then they can go off and get into the workforce or go in through an apprenticeship, anything like that. So don't forget QTAC's there to help um, and match students with the right opportunities for them. So there are options available to you and there's, there's always assistance there and you can ring them on the following number. Okay, so what happens if you get an offer? You get around, there's two rounds. There's one in December and there's also one in, um, in January. You're thinking about doing two courses. One course is an offer round in um, December and then the, another um, course, still with nursing, say what Harry wants to do, there's another offer round in um, January that you're really looking and hoping to get that one. So what will we do? So you've got an offer, fantastic, but you then say, what now? So we're looking at, oh, I still really want that university. I've been given the opportunity to get into Griffith Uni and it gave me the offer in December, but I really want to go to ACU and ACU doesn't give me the opportunity to go to it until the offer round in January. So what you say is, okay, I'm going to conditionally accept this offer. So I've got my offer, I got in on my first round in January. So, oh sorry, in December. Then I say, okay, I'm conditionally going to accept that, but ACU is really my dream job. That's the one that I really want to go to, that's the university. So then you get your preference and you change your preference to be number one. So you originally had your, um, University, Griffith University is number one because it was offered to you in December and you had your ACU one down at, down at number four maybe. So then you say, okay, I'm conditionally going to accept this one, but I really want to get into ACU. So you put ACU up top and in January, if it offers it to you, you can accept it and then you don't have to worry about the other one because you can accept the January one and the December one will go away. So you just reject it. You can defer if you're not sure whether you want to go to university for the first year. You can defer to 2024. But you need to go to the university websites. Each individual university has their own uh, requisitions. So they will decide whether you can defer or whether you can't defer. They may only let you defer for six months or they may let you defer for 12 months. It'll just depend on the institution itself. So what else do I need to know about responding to an offer? If you conditionally accept an offer, you will need to rearrange, like I said, your preferences. Make sure they sit above the original offer, okay? So, and if you need to contact QTAC, if you're having problems, and a lot of the students used to actually come and see me and say, how do I do it? How do I, how do I order my preferences? That's fine too. So what else do I need to know about responding to an offer? So if, it, if you enrol in a course and you no longer wish to study it, withdraw from it, withdraw from the institution. Check your offer email and make sure you inform someone so you don't get charged for it. That's the big thing. You don't want to get past that sensitive state and then the student has to actually pay for that unit, those units that he's enrolled in already. So make sure that you've got the right time, time frame and that you check your offer and the details. More about Harry. During year 12, he's struggling. And he has some personal problems. So what does Harry do? He says, well, I don't think I've been coping with this all the way through, so I may need some help with some adjustment schemes. So there are adjustment schemes, and these are, ATARs can be calculated against this. And so an application is, is access through these educational adjustment schemes. So Harry may, may have mm, had some family issues, so then he needs to um, download one of these forms and these are maybe he had financial hardship, the home environment and responsibility, like he had to take care of his sick mum or dad or something like that. Um, English language, he had difficulties with that. So you'd fill it out one of these educational access schemes. Some personal illness or disability, or there was something with the school environment. One of those um, you may be able to apply for. 
So other adjustment schemes, regional schools, school relationships, subject schemes, elite athletes, introductory studies, equity, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders all have other adjustment schemes, but they are institutional wise. You can't just say they're one, fits, one size fits all. It's all depend on each institution and they will give you different amounts of points towards it. You still get your same ATAR and then the institution will adjust those points per se. So QTAC will give you your ATAR, nothing changes. If you get 88, you get 88. But then with the institution, they'll adjust it maybe to for a regional access scheme form. So you can get up to two points with this. So if um, the regional institution, so now that we've got into say QUT, QUT wants a 90, but you only got 88. If you've got this rural access scheme, you'll get two points, so it'll take you up to a 90. That means you can get into the course generally that you've preferred to get into. So that way, these things benefit you. And of course, these will all be put up on the portal for you to be able to look at tomorrow or the next day, depending on when, when it's uploaded onto the portal. But the students have all been sent. I've sent them a link for all of these already. So they do have access to them from an email from me. Um, courses, easy. Like I'm saying, it's easy to actually um, go onto the QTEC website now. It's made it very simple. It was a bit overdone a couple of years ago, so they've taken it back to very basic. So you can see the ATAR registration, your QTEC application, key dates, course search and career finder. So everything that you probably need in a one-stop shop. Easy, like I said, finding a course, just type it in there. You can select by institution as well. And it, um, you just hit, hit the search bus button and away you go. So for this one, I've selected arts and up comes all the arts that I want to. In the filters, you can actually search for different um, situations. So I could sit search for business and tourism on the left hand side. So your filters are on the left and then you're just doing your general searches in the right hand side in the finder course. So you click on the actual university and it will come up all the information about the course overview, the hex fees, the code, what you need to enter into your QTAC application if you want that course gives you your start dates, how many years it's for, if it's going to be for four years or if it's going to be for three years or if you want to do it part time over six years or eight years, whatever it is. It gives you all that information just there. Again, arts, I wanted CQ University. I typed in that I wanted to, to go to CQ University and then it gives you all the applications there for where you want to go to. Again, here is your course overview, your admission centre, your student profile and career possibilities. So it's um, very detailed and it gives you a lot of information about it, background. And of course, the cost here, the fee is, so you're looking at 10,313. Um, Bachelor of Arts again, there's your admission criteria, all the rest of it. So additional courses. Maybe university, like I've been saying, doesn't sit, sit right for you. So, okay, if you want to be an apprentice, you go to, onto the Australian Apprenticeships website. Detailed information. It has so much information there that it's, you couldn't get lost in it. Um, it talks about what is an Australian apprenticeship. So, it's a national apprenticeship. It's the same as us going to university or going to TAFE or going to through a registered training organisation, they're all nationally registered, recognised within Australia. So it tells you about how you can find an apprentice network provider and that's the ASIN. So, or you can go through a registered training group. So a registered training group will help you find an apprenticeship. So they will be um, a registered group um, that actually goes to employers, finds the employers and says, do you need an apprentice? And the employer says, yes, I need an apprentice boilermaker or I need an apprentice um, carpenter. Could you help me find a student that will fit into this group? So your group training, they'll help uh, with wages, with subsidies, how you fill in your applications. They're all about 
um, helping you. And they're also working within the government, so they have to get um, a licence to be able to be an ASIN as well. So again, here's a group training organisations, the goals, they create more employability. And if you're not happy with your apprenticeship, they can move you to different places as well. So if you want to change, you're not really happy with the place that you're working in, the workplace, they can often help you to relocate and continue your apprenticeship as well, or change into something that you might be more interested in. And that can be a benefit as well. So your yeah, ASINs are there. You've got the Busy Work Group, MEGT, Serena Russell, Mass. They're all nationally recognised and they're all great support networks. So they, they will help you out no end. MRAL is another group training organisation. We've got one close. To, we've got MRAL here in Cairns. We've also got Skill360 that'll help you set up your apprenticeship. Now, the other big one is TAFE. And We've had TAFE here with us this evening. This system works very similar to QTAC um, with your trade training and your courses and the offerings that they provide you. And as I suggested before, get job ready with free TAFE. So TAFE is offering free courses in 2023 and it should carry through to 2024. So as soon as you finish school, um, what is it, November, um, you can actually then apply for a free TAFE course and it could be a trade, a carpentry, anything like that. So you can actually start working on your skills if you want to. Now this was the other thing that I picked up earlier today and this is the fee-free training course for nursing students that is open to all students that have completed school. So if you've completed Year 12, in November, you can apply to do this. So you don't even have to go to um, the university or do a diploma through them or QTAC or anything like that. You can apply directly to TAFE. There are a number of op uh, free training programs. And so I'd suggest if, the, if you're interested in something like that, that you really hone into going and having a search through here. Um, again, TAFE will help you go through the university pathways so, and you can download the pathways guide from them. Key dates for you. So QTAC applications Tuesday the 1st of October, so 1st of August, sorry. So they're already open um, and on-time applications for semester one are due by Friday the 29th, 2023. And the time for when most offers are released are on the 11th of January, 2024 and Friday the 8th of December 23. So you cannot change your preferences after this date. You've always got to change your preferences prior to them being delivered out. So applications, apply early. Don't apply too soon. Think about it. Make sure you've got your preferences all sorted. Use um, your own personal email. Check your course entry requirements. Authorise someone else that can access your QTAC um, page because if you're going away and you can't access this at all, you're going on schoolies or some reason you, you're going overseas or interstate or whatever, make sure that someone else has access to your QTAC um, website so that we have a backup person. And ask QTAC if you get stuck. Extra help, there's fact sheets um, on the QTAC website. so. Um, they keep a range of resources there. Um, there's also your passport to the future, so you can go and, and look at guides and covers and things like that. Um, at some point in time, I will need to double check the year 12 leaving school checklist. So we've given this out to students for the past, I don't know, five to seven years, I think. Um, these have all got links for you to be able to utilise, to get your Medicare card, to go on and get your enrolment, for um, uh, electoral commission, even if you aren't, aren't 18, you can already enrol so that you automatically um, come up when you're 18 that you're already enrolled in it. Um, then there's a whole lot of other resources in this checklist guide, which is, um, I, I think, very handy. <laughs>